This episode of Star Talk is brought to you by Curiosity Stream. This is Star Talk. I'm your host, Neil deGrasse Tyson, your personal astrophysicist. And on this edition of Star Talk, it's Office Hours, which is another version of Cosmic Queries. We're just calling it Office Hours because you can come in with any question at all on any subject. And I got my man, Chuck Nice here. Chuck. Hey, Neil, Thank what's happening? Good. Of course, brother. Okay. How are right. you, man? Thanks for doing this. Well, hey, it's always my pleasure. Uh, I haven't seen the questions yet. I, no, I you never, never do. do. One day you'll see. show me the questions. No, I will not. I'll mug you in the street. Yeah. <laughs> the questions. <laughs> so what do you have? That'd be pretty funny, actually. <laughs> I think I just saw Neil deGrasse Tyson beat the hell out of a guy <laughs> and run off with some papers. <laughs> I wonder what was that? <laughs> what was that about? Um... Yes, of course. You know we get um, we take questions from all over the internet, no, mm -hmm. no, wherever you can find us, and so uh, we always start with a Patreon patron question. All right, let's do it. And this is uh, Ari Modi or Ari, Ari Maudi uh, from Patreon. Mm -hmm. Ari says, "Hey, I'm from Los Angeles. Some astrophysicists say there will eventually be universe death." When the last atoms are ripped apart by the expansion and we enter the big freeze. But we are also told a universe can come from nothing and taking any volume of empty space and waiting a gazillion years, matter can and does arise from that void. Aren't these contradictions? Why wouldn't something from nothing happen after heat death if that is a fundamental part? of how the universe works. So Ma Ari Maudi. He totally he answered that question. Got he got all in. man. Got all up in. All up in it. In the question. He was like, I'm going <laughs> shopping for astrophysics. <laughs> and I'm going to put everything in the cart. Uh, everything in. So uh, right now, the temperature of the universe, if you put a thermometer out there, right, and it sort of could receive the sort of the energy of the void. Okay. Okay, it's basically the cosmic microwave background. Right. That that energy gives you about three degrees. But we used to be much hotter when the universe was smaller. Right. Okay? Right. We've been expanding and cooling. Not fundamentally different in principle. I mean, the mechanisms are the same, but when, when you, have you ever let air out of a bicycle tire? Does anyone still run a bicycle? Of course, yes. Okay. I do it all the time, and it's not even my bike. <laughs> I just walk around Manhattan, I see a bicycle tire, and I'm just like, you know what? Expanding air is is cooler than the air that it was before it expanded. Okay. So the air fall, you know, going past your thumb feels cool. It's right. not just because it's moving, it's actually dropping in temperature by expanding. And so you, the universe expands and cools. It's a thermodynamic fact. Okay. And by the way, we can look to faraway galaxies right. whose light came to us from a time in our past. Right. And there are measurements you can make and show that that galaxy was feeling a warmer temperature in its time than the temperature that we measure today. That's pretty wild. It is completely wild. Because you're not talking about a, 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 a very um, a, a big source. Like that light source is... It's a light source, yeah, but it's, it's ubiquitous. But it's ubiquitous. So gotcha. everybody feels it. Right. And there's certain... Uh, so now how exactly... There's certain atoms where okay. the electron will move in a certain way depending ah, on what bath it's in. There you go. The bath of light. I got you. Yeah, yeah. And that so makes sense They're now. a little more excited right. farther away there than you they go. are here. That makes perfect sense. So we're not just making this up. All right. Okay? All right. So... You know, I had... Listen, I just... I had to make sure. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so... Uh, and the... As we get twice as big, the drop the temperature in half. Three right. times big, it drops it to a third. So, so there is going. a direct, a direct uh, inverse proportional relationship correct. to that inverse drop? proportion. Very good. Oh, well, yeah, you like Very that? Good. Did I like that. That? that was good. I saw what you did there. With that. <laughs> <laughs> Not just proportional, inverse proportional. Yeah, exactly. So, so it as this continues, the temperature of the universe drops. All stars will ultimately burn out as they shut off one by one wow. in the night sky. Look at that. And as they shut off in the night sky, yeah. um, you can ask, well, are we making new stars? Well, we are with the gas clouds that are still out there. Right. But then they make a star, and then that star dies. So the gas gets sort of trapped up in stars that die. Mm -hmm. All right, so then there's no more gas to make stars. Then the atoms themselves decay. 
And ultimately, in about 10 to the 30 years or so, which is a huge number. Right. Huge number. The protons decay. The very structure of matter itself loses all integrity. Wow. And so the universe ultimately dies not with a bang, but with a whimper. Right. And not in fire, but in ice. It peters out. That's, wow. After I said those poetic words, you say it peters out. Yeah. <laughs> Is that the best you got for me? Oh, that was the joke. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was the whole joke. Um, <laughs> so this, this idea that you can get something from nothing, I just want to get, spend a minute on that right. if, if I can. Okay. So um, if you start with nothing and then create something, that has both positive and negative energy in it. Mm -hmm. All that matters is that the sum, you add them together and you get zero. Zero, that's it. Okay, so you can start with nothing yet have something if the total energy goes to zero. Right. So another way to think about that is, let's say you have a level field. Mm -hmm. And say, I wanna dig a hole. Okay. So I'm gonna dig a hole and stack the dirt over on the left. Right. So I keep doing this. I can make a mountain as high as I want. Right. But you're going to have a hole. I'm going to have a hole. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I'm going to have a hole. I got a hole. Right? I got a hole. There you go. So um, so the, the, what we're not sure about is whether you create another universe within this universe that has expanded right. out of that void. Our best understanding of this multiverse hypothesis is that the universe that's created is not causally, what we say, causally connected to what's outside of it. So you could, in principle, have multiple universes popping up into existence. Right. But in the expansion and the edge of what that universe is, you have no way to interact with it. So, so there you have it. Wow. We're stuck in this one. We're stuck in this one, yeah. and that's all there is to it. Yeah. That's pretty wild. Yeah. Man, that's a – well, that, listen. He, he got his yo, money's worth on that one. He got his money's worth, bro. That's right. Yo, Ari, uh, that was a great question. Mm -hmm. uh, it took us took, – took, wow. Took us to the edge of the us universe. To the edge of the universe and back. Not only in space, yes, but in but time. In time. Mm -hmm. Could you go to the edge of the universe without space and time? Actually, once Einstein put forth relativity, right, where the fourth dimension is time, right. and people say, "Well, that's weird. Why is that?" No, no one has ever been at a place unless it was at a time. No one has ever acknowledged a time unless they were at a place. Think about it. If I say to you, Chuck, I'll meet you tomorrow at 10 o'clock. What's your next question to me? What are we doing? No. That's <laughs> <laughs> okay. What's your question after that? <laughs> of course, where? 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 I give you a time. You ask where. Right. Okay. I say, Chuck, I'll meet you tomorrow at the corner of 33rd and 3rd. When? When? We know intuitively that our path through life involves the juxtaposition of space and time. We know that intuitively. Wow. We just don't think of it in those terms. Right. Because they're measured by such different tools. Exactly. A, a watch and, and a map. Right. Right? So, but in fact, they're conjoined. And Einstein formalized that statement in his um, theories of relativity. Amazing. That is great stuff. You got it. All right. Let's move on to a, another question. Mm -hmm. um, hey, how about Woody? Uh, it's Clearly, this is a Pixar, Disney Pixar uh, character okay. who's just writing in. <laughs> uh, Woody would like to know. Woody. <laughs> do lasers and solar panels work together? We could design and build the components for specific purposes of wireless energy transfer at great distances, which frequency on the light spectrum would be best suited for this task. Then how would you resolve the problem of a five watt laser being a dribble like Chuck at 3 a.m. after too few many 500 kilowatt laser? What? <laughs> what the hell is this guy talking about? <laughs> Uh, okay, I think I, got, I think I got his point. So what he wants to do is, I have energy, energy here, and okay. I want to put it over there. Right. All right? So, by the way, that, when you think about it, is kind of like what war is. Okay. What is a battle? A battle I is... have energy here, and I want to put it over there. Right. That is kind of what the waging of war is all about. Mm -hmm. Right? I have a bow and arrow. I put energy in the arrow here, <laughs> and then the arrow goes over there. There's a bullet, has energy. There's a bomb. There's a delivery <laughs> mechanism. Oh, thanks for the sound effects there, Chuck. Yeah, no worries. Uh, so, so I think they're 
what he wants to is it he? Yeah, the yeah. Woody. Yeah. Assume. yeah. What he wants to know is if I have laser energy over here, right. and laser goes fast and it's very directed, can I just have a catcher's mitt somewhere where I want to deliver it, right? And then use it, there. and then use it, and then use it as in energy. Prin in principle, nothing stopping that, right? Okay, except the curvature of Earth's surface, if you believe in a round Earth, right. so you can't beam, you can't bend. Beam, beam light and bend it, right? Okay. Uh, not on Unless Earth. you have a gravitational force uh, that will bend it for you. Yes, that would work. So on a black hole, you try to send a beam of light, and it'll just curve and right. go around the uh, the black hole itself. So, But on Earth and sort of normal gravity that we live in, no. Not. So it has to be a line of sight delivery. Right. If it's enough energy to be useful, it's going to be pretty dangerous to cross that beam. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm just saying. I shouldn't be laughing. I know, I know. It's really serious. It's really a serious I mean, issue. Be, but at the same time. If it's enough energy to do good stuff with it. <laughs> right. You it's are, enough energy that will do some real harm. You cut you in half exactly. just walking down the street. See, what's funny about that what? is if you're smart enough to make that happen, but you didn't even think it through completely and yeah. so you actually do it and like on the test run you got the catcher's mitt there mm -hmm. and you're just like oh my god look at this we've actually figured out a way to transfer energy over great distances and oh damn we just killed somebody <laughs> or or a, a, a more a, a more tragic version of that story was let's celebrate and dance. And then they accidentally dance That's into in front the beam. Of, <laughs> front of the beam. <laughs> it kills the inventor yeah. of the... See, your version has poetic justice. Right, right, right that one. <laughs> so... Um, yeah, so so that's an issue. So it's so insulated wires. I mean, we were kind of already do that we with do electricity. That with fiber optics. Uh, electricity. Well, no, that's information we send by fiber right. optics, right. not a, not energy not, itself. I, so you're right. Yes, okay. it's a small I'm, amount of energy, but yeah, it's not but it's enough. Not, to, it's not enough to power anything. To power anything, right. correct? I got you, I got you. And what we learned here's just an interesting. You didn't ask this, but let me put this in the in the oh, mix. Okay. Do you remember everyone's? expectation of the future as imagined in the 1950s and 60s. Flying cars, right. motorized uh, walkways. Right. People were thinking that energy would be very accessible, basically, because it takes energy to fly cars. Right. And to, but that's not what became accessible. Information right. became accessible. It's, well, yeah. So we're living in information, in information age, and it costs you nothing energetically to send information. True. And as a as a as a communicative species, information is high it's a highly valued commodity. Mm -hmm. So we send information around the world. At, at, you know, with no with no effort, I was yes, it's a big effort, but no, uh, the investment of energy that that requires is extremely low. True. So uh so back then, no one imagined a world where. Uh, so the movie two thousand and one, a space odyssey. Yeah. The computer was this big thing in the center of the of the spaceship, and it was controlling everything. No one is imagining that you're going to carry a computer on your hip, right? Plus entertainment on your. Hip. This was not because it's information. Yeah. And it distributed information is what that is. All right, so. Um, we do send energy, but we send it in wires, and they're insulated, so you don't touch the wire and get electrocuted. That's the electri electricity version of a laser. Right, right. right. Yeah, here's the wire sending energy. Here, go grab it with two hands. No, you're not going to do that. Now, now go stand in some water. Hold this. <laughs> Hold this and stand in a puddle. Okay. <laughs> I just took out some insurance on you. <laughs> <laughs> Got time for a few more questions in this segment. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, Zachary Sproblin wants to know this. Given your vast knowledge of physics... And, um, well, yes, your vast knowledge of physics. What are your thoughts on a holographic universe? Okay, I've never heard anybody ask this question. This is okay. Yeah. Do you believe the universe to be holographic in nature? If so, do you think we should be researching more about the perceived difference between the particles and waves, or are we already doing as much as our tools will allow? What are your thoughts on nature of waves versus particles and this perceived separation therein? Okay, that's a whole other thing, but yeah, let me that's... let me start with the holographic universe. Okay, cool. I don't claim to be like a total expert in the holographic universe, mm -hmm. but I'll share with you what I know and my understanding of it. There are calculations you can do that shows that 
in a black hole and the event horizon, that's the point of no return, okay. that if you fall through that event horizon, all the information contained within you gets remembered at that event horizon. Okay. Okay? Okay. So that's a little bit spooky because you can ask the question, are we something real or are we just some imprint? Imprint. Just an imprint. Of some other of thing, thing that's that real. was real. Right. That's correct. That's it. That's a, that, that's it's important. almost like the Plato shadows right. argument or, or conversation that you have. Are, is there some higher reality of which we are just shadows mm -hmm. representing it? And so it's, it's, a, it's a spooky idea that has sort of theoretical tap roots, mm -hmm. but I, I wouldn't know how to test that. Maybe the folks who came up with this have thought that through, but I, I'm not there. Right. with them on that. I don't I don't know how you would test this, but m usually if the if the theoretical underpinnings are working and they're based on other theories that are well tested, like relativity and black holes and all this, you want to take it seriously. They didn't just pull it out of the ether. Okay? Right. Right. They okay. were uh, so so that's an intriguing fact. Now, waves and particles, the duality? Yeah. Matter is waves and particles. Right. Okay. Wait, do you know why an electron microscope works? Um, because it costs a lot of money. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I just okay. know they're really expensive. Why is the word electron in the same phrase as microscope? Microscopes use waves, light waves. Right. Okay. Well, you can't. Can I blow your mind? Go ahead. Uh, I, Better I, that. <laughs> are, you, are, you, are you seated? <laughs> I'm seated. Okay. Here you go. Doesn't make sense that. With whatever microscope you're using, you cannot see detail smaller than the wavelength of light right. you're using to illuminate the object. That makes sense. Does that make sense? That, absolutely, because you're, it's- That's it, your blunt- it's what, it's, That's it's, what you're that's looking your, at. That's what you think, right. okay. As a matter of fact, you couldn't see it, like no matter what you're looking at, if there is no light, then you don't see anything don't in, see the, in, in a microscope. Anything. That's okay. it, you see nothing. So, so you need some light, so now you turn on the light, all right, now, if I'm using red light, red has a wavelength, a certain wavelength, right. okay? But if I use wavelength, uh, light that's shorter wavelength, so orange or yellow or green or blue, okay. of the visible spectrum, blue or violet, has the shortest of the wavelengths. Okay. So if I have a violet light microscope, I will see detail mm -hmm. better than I would in a red light microscope. Right. Okay. You'd also see all the like really nasty, cruddy stuff because it's a black light and it's just like, ooh, I don't know what was on oh, this slide. <laughs> that's, if go, that's if you go. These people. That's if you go ultraviolet. Right. That's right. if you go ultraviolet. ultraviolet. Right. Not just violet. Not just violet. Ultraviolet. ultraviolet. Yeah. Get your ultra going. Right. There. So, so here's the thing. <laughs> um, it also means you can pack more information into a certain right. sort of uh, uh, um, size. It's why Blu-ray players have higher resolution than regular CDs. Right. Because regular CDs used, like, didn't yeah. use blue lasers. And who knew streaming was gonna take them both out? Regular <laughs> CDs <laughs> and blu Oh, sorry, let explain. <laughs> CDs are what we used to, yeah, you know, exactly. DVDs. For you, for you kids out there. <laughs> used to be something called a CD. It used to end up, and that's the thing, yeah, right, right, right. But go ahead. <laughs> okay, so the point is, an electron has a wave associated with it that is on the in the realm of deep, deep UV into X-rays. Oh. So if you if you illuminate a source with electrons, right. you basically have X-ray wavelength light telescope. That's very cool. That's what you have, and, and, and you can see. That's why have you seen pictures right. taken for a, 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 an electron microscope? You're seeing the the fibers on the on the microbes. Right. Exactly. It's like nasty. That's amazing. Yes. Because you're using the wave, the wave of the particle, of the particle, the wave of the particle. Damn! 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 Damn. Yo, that's Bam. hot. Bam. That's hot. And so my point is, there is no meaning for you to ask: Is it a wave or a particle? Right. It is both. It is both. And just because your brain can't wrap your head around it doesn't mean it's not true. 
Wow. We don't have, when I say your brain, I mean, our vocabulary, right. our awareness of a reality requires that we choose, is it a this or is it a that? Is it a right. book? Is it a chair? Is it a, are you a, a this or you're that? Right. Okay? Right. This is, we, we're, we're forcing this in ourselves mm -hmm. um, because we like compartmentalizing. This is part of the gender thing. Are you a boy or are you a girl? Right. Which is it? Okay? Well, and, I haven't decided. You haven't decided. Um, so this forcing... It seems to be a deeply human thing, right. but when but it's, it's time to understand the universe, it's universe, not nature. Not, not, it doesn't necessarily have to be nature. It's not cosmic nature. Oh, yeah. okay. You got it. We got to take a break. All right. Okay. We're in uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson's office hours on Star Talk. We'll be back in a moment. Hey, if you want to learn more about our incredible universe, you have to check out Curiosity Streams, a Curious World series. Okay. That means... The name of it is A Curious World, and it comes in a series. It's not about baseball. They've done some incredible visualization of the formation of the universe. I mean, that's assuming that you and I are in the same universe. You'll be able to see what it looked like before there were planets and stars, what it looked like when the universe was mostly hydrogen and helium. Or should I say hydrogen and helium? Okay, that was unnecessary. Subscribe to Curiosity Stream right now to watch. It's just two ninety nine dollars per month. And for Star Talk fans, the first 31 days are completely free if you sign up at curiositystream.com slash startalk and use promo code STARTALK. You'll get unlimited access to the world's top documentaries and nonfiction series with Curiosity Stream. Go ahead, sign up now. We're back on Star Talk, Office Hours Edition which is a way of saying cosmic queries, but you can pull that query from wherever you want in the universe. We got Chuck here to mangle your name. Yes, as he absolutely. <laughs> you got a little better, Chuck. Uh, you know, a little, little better. I want. I, I want to. I'm an educator. I want to give. I think it's part of the charm of the show, <laughs> the fact that I can't read or, All right. or mention or that I can't figure out anybody's name. All right. So uh, let's move on to uh, Kyle Ryan. Toth. How easy was that? Kyle, Kyle? Ryan Toth. Three hey, syllables. Three syllables. You get it all, hey, all hey done. Kyle, man. Thanks, bro. Oh, no, Ryan is two syllables. Yeah, sorry. Ryan is two. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Not when I say it, though. It's Ryan. Um, Ryan, 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 come Ryan. on down. It's time is for that, dinner. Hey, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, Ryan. How you doing, man? Everything's what's it. <laughs> How you doing, man? <laughs> all right. Um, uh, Kyle says. Who was it? It was um, uh, Jeff Foxworthy. Um, who said in Texas there's certain words that are like single syllable words with their multiple syllables? Yes, like I don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> right, and it's one word, it's one syllable, but yeah, that's like uh, I have a friend. He was like, uh, if you're Italian, um, uh, Jeep is uh, it sounds like one syllable, but it's a whole sentence. You know, it's like Jeep. Yeah, not yet, you know, but did I don't know you what that eat? Means. Oh, 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 jeet, jeet, jeet. jeet. <laughs> Why is that if you're Italian? Uh, I don't know. That's what he told me. So, Oh, you mean Italian descend in speaking like with a Brooklyn accent? Yeah, yeah. Hey, jeet. Hey, jeet. Oh, yeah, okay. Right. That's yeah, right. Exactly. I'm, thinking, I'm, yet, I'm thinking pure Italian. I'd say, oh, no, no, I'm not no, getting no. that. Yeah, right, yeah, no. sorry. No, this would be, right, uh, right. the mm -hmm. diaspora Italian. I got one. Go ahead. You know what I'm saying? Nah, yeah, and wait. Okay, that is, do yeah, you mean, know what I am saying? Yeah, right. Do you know what I am saying? No, yeah, I'm, sa no, I'm, no I'm saying. No, I'm saying. No, I'm saying. And y'all yeah, mean? Y'all know what I mean? Yep. Yep, yep. yep. There you go. Y'all yeah, mean? There you go. Y'all yeah, mean? Uh, all right, no, here we go. No, I'm saying. So. Uh, <laughs> I'll get to the rest of the show. So I'm going to say. I'm going to give the answer. No, I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right, here we go. No, you know what I'm saying? Here we go. How do you even spell it? N O M. Apostrophe S A I N. No, I'm saying. No, I'm saying. No, no I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do you spell? Mm -hmm? Mm -hmm. It, it's unspellable. No, you. It's. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And if you're a black woman, it's. Mm -hmm. Oh, the hands gotta get all in there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the same thing. You just went a higher octave. Well, That's no, all. the pitch actually connotes the feeling behind it. Mm -hmm. So there's the affirmation. Mm -hmm. It's like, baby, you look good. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then it's just like, uh, um, so uh, I, I I didn't go to work today. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay. See? Yeah. So so the pitch the carries pitch meaning. Carries meaning. Even though you're saying exactly the same exact thing. Exact same thing, but it's it all in a pitch. 
You know what I mean? Okay, um, that's good. I learned, I learned something today. And then there's mm-hmm. no, that's good. That's a that's a that's a you are lying through your. That's it. That's absolutely <laughs> right. It's, mm-hmm. You are lying. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, better known as Negro, please. <laughs> so there you go. Um, here we go. This is. Uh, I got a word where the pronunciation changes just by capitalizing the first letter. Wait a minute. Go ahead. No. You'll get that later. Okay, go. Oh, no. what a tease. <laughs> All right. Oh, well, uh-huh. Okay, here we go. Oh, you want the word? I'll tell you the word. No, no, no. Let's okay. make, make it a tease. We'll, right. we'll do it after, after, the, after, question. after, after the, the question. After the next break. After the next break. Ooh, after the next break. Well, that's a real tease. No, keep you coming ooh, back. That, you got to stay here now. <laughs> <laughs> you are forced. You are forced to be here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, here we go. Imagine a planet orbiting close to a black hole mm-hmm. and experiencing extreme time dilation. How would outgoing signals of electromagnetic communication be affected? Will we still receive such signals? Would they be distorted and or appear very slow paced? Yeah, no, yeah, it still goes at the speed of light. Right. If the planet is outside the event horizon, it's not trapped and it's in orbit, yes, it is in a deep gravitational well. Right. There is very serious time dilation relative to anyone looking at them. Right. They will send out a signal and the Energy of their light as it comes out will uh, it, it will continuously lose energy so that by the time it does, not speed not speed it'll still come out the speed Just of light energy but if it starts out at a high energy band of light mm-hmm. by the time it gets out it'll be a very low energy band of light interesting yeah so you're gonna get very low uh, low energy see so and that's counterintuitive to what you would think because you would think that it would lose speed. But you can't. Light can't yeah, not lose light, speed. Not light. That's light right. cannot lose speed. And by the way, a, a way to think about this is if I send a, a beam of light, there's a certain amount of energy, and I do that in one second, let's right, say. Right. Okay? But now I'm looking at you, and my one second is now, na- sorry, what you're calling one second now takes an hour for me. Okay. Then that amount of energy that if it's packed into one second delivery time has a certain intensity to it. Right. But for now, it's taking you an hour to send out that energy, as far as my watch is concerned. Right. So the energy gets diluted right. over that ascent from the black hole. Interesting. So yeah, it's it's called a gravitational redshift. Right. Oh, That's cool. What it, it has a term. Yeah. You can there's a, probably a wiki page on it. Because I got good people. Yeah. My my astrophysics, my community. I think we got some of the best wiki pages, accurate wiki pages out there. And and, and by the way, um, it is. It's a hard page. No. <laughs> uh, I'm comparing with other sciences. I think we do a good job. No, no, you guys do a good job. We do a good job. Uh, you, what you, gravitational redshift. What you don't try to do on that wiki page is make it easy <laughs> for regular people like me to understand. Look, look, gravitational redshift. Yeah, there. gravitational okay. redshift. All right, that's a great. Hey, first of all, that was mm-hmm. a great question, Kyle. Yeah. So thank you so much. All right. Um, what else you bring it on? Let's go with Annie C. Hickman. And Annie wants to know this. Uh, she says, I am a teacher. And a manual. Give it up for the teacher. Yeah, give it up. Boom, blow it up for the teachers. Uh, and a manual, because God, are they making such a sacrifice to yeah. just waste your life on these kids. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Damn, Josh. Uh, no. <laughs> you know I'm joking. I, I, my mother was a teacher. I have nothing but the utmost uh-huh. respect for teachers. Um, she says, I am a teacher and a manual wheelchair user. From time to time, my students and I wonder if a wheelchair could be powered in space with fireworks, or perhaps they are ready to get rid of me. <laughs> to send, send her up there? they want to send her to space and, and, and put fireworks <laughs> on her wheelchair, um, since fireworks are rockets. She's thinking about propulsion here. She is thinking about propulsion. Also, would having mobility issues on Earth be erased in space since there is no gravity? If you float around the space station, for example, aren't you lo- using your legs to... Uh, for the need to balance. You know, that's a great question because people would think that in zero gravity that your movements might do something in terms of uh, affecting the way you drift about in zero gravity. So what what is the answer there? So first, great question. And so I presume it means she has power, she has arm power, arm power to propel to her propel wheels. Her right. So that's a key element of this. So first of all, in space, you don't need the wheelchair. You, you have a wheelchair so that you don't, you're not on the ground, right? right? So it, in, when I say in space, I'm referring to zero G in space. Right. Just take that as a given here. So if you're in space, 
Um, generally, people are not maneuvering themselves with their legs. Right. They're, the spaceships are designed, space station is designed to have grips. All, Oh, you're right. Okay, I've so, never seen them use their legs. They're yeah, always grabbing they're, little they're grab grabbing, and then they and then they pull and, themselves and then, and they swim through like the air. Swimming. Yeah, exactly. And so you don't want to go too fast because you have to stop somewhere at the other time, and you got to like be ready to stop. Right. So if you have full use of your arms and your arm muscles, uh, you do you'll be doing what every everybody else is doing on the on the space station. Oh man, that's so cool. So now the difference is you won't be able to do some of the sort of acrobatics that they do to show you. So, so for example, one of them is they'll, they'll start rotating and then they'll bring their knees up to their chest. You might be able to pull your own legs up if right, you don't have use of your legs. You just reach down and grab them. Right. But otherwise they're pulling their knees up and then they see that they spin faster. Right. And that's just have, they're just having spinning fun. Right. Um, like when an ice skater brings their arms in, they spin faster. Right. If you bring your, your extremities in, and you had a slight rotation before you have a faster rotation. Right. And in case you are not, you don't feel nausea enough <laughs> for being in zero G, now you can just you spin can, right. and then exactly. you, you throw up and right on the spot. The walls. Paint the walls. Yeah, go ahead and paint the walls. <laughs> yeah, if you're spinning while you throw up, then there's this right. spiraling Oh, that's a beautiful effect. picture. That's a beautiful picture. <laughs> so I don't think NASA uh, so now, shows okay, us. So now yeah, back so, to so her she's wheelchair fine and the rockets. Now, so here's the thing. Because I'm thinking in my It's head. not about the chair. No, it's no, about- no. I'm, I'm, I'm she, so I'm talking about what, what she was saying. If you put rockets on a wheelchair, but on the wheels themselves, would you propel yourself through space in that chair, even though you don't need it? Or would the rocket just spin the wheel in place? So <clears throat> what will happen is, you're because the wheel is on an axle, mm-hmm. and so now you're putting something called torque right. onto it. Torque is a force that causes something to rotate. Okay. I've always loved the word torque. torque. It, it sounds it, powerful. It's, it's a badass it, it, word. It is. Yeah. You know? Yeah, give me some torque. Exactly. Plus, it, like, you know, the car folks all like oh, torque. They love too. that. They love you know? Yeah, 600 pounds of torque. Uh, uh, foot know? pounds. Foot pounds. Thank yeah, you. it needs a distance needs and a, a thing. And a right, because it's a distance from the point of rotation. How many feet away and how many pounds force to push it. So um, what you'll do primarily is rotate the wheels. wheels. But there's something called conservation of angular momentum. So if you're in space, and you wanted to keep your wheelchair, if you sent wheels rotating one direction, something has to compensate and rotate backwards. Okay, so you'll push the wheels that way, and you'll just you'll rotate, just uh, you'll, you'll just rotate so the in two opposite. Of you di- will be going in opposite directions, Correct. spinning around. Correct. So what you right. want is, if there's a force operating on you, you want that. This is inside baseball here. You want that line of force, if you extended it, to go through your center of mass. Right. Right. And that way, your entire system moves. It's just moving all at once. <clears throat> all at once. Everything's moving. If you're at once. off the center of mass, right. you're going to start rotating. Is you're going to rotate. Yeah, you have right. some movement forward, but a lot of that's going to go into your rotation. And you don't want you want to be stable right. out there. So there you go, Annie. You're, you, you, what you want to do is lose the wheelchair. Lose the wheelchair. Now, you all don't together, need it. You don't need it. You don't need it. Yeah. 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 Very cool. There and she go. likes fireworks rather than just those jetpacks. So you can take like Roman candles or whatever, light it. And since that has a, a, uh, uh, a Roman candle, is, is an intermittent, right? right? So you can just adjust it. Hold it where you to, want. Where you want. And, and let it pull you. And let it pull you, yeah. Very cool. Very cool. God, I want to go to space now. God. Yeah. Okay. And throw up all over everyone. <laughs> <laughs> all right, do we have time for another one? Yeah, yeah. A couple okay. more. Let's couple do more? it. Okay, here we go. This is J. DeGator. J. DeGator wants to know this. What duh. we'll go with that, Chuck. yeah. Wait, okay, <laughs> hey man, hey Jay, I'm sorry, <laughs> we'll go with that, yeah. So, yeah, you know what I'm saying, yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> it's the gator, y'all you know I mean, <laughs> no, yeah, I know what you mean, you know what I'm saying. All right, here we go. Right. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> what does the merging of black holes mean for the future of the universe? Could the universe eventually, if it does start a sort of contraction phase, be the victim of a collective hypermassive black hole? Could we be left with a singularity or a black hole containing all the information in the universe waiting for the next big bang to trigger? Or does the universe have more not-so-distant problems to worry about? (laughs) (laughs) You prioritize your issues. So, So... Uh, black holes are not as voracious as lore leads us to believe. Right. There's a black hole in the center of our galaxy. Okay. And it's a, what we call a supermassive black hole. I forgot the 
<clears throat> I forgot the exact mass, hundreds of thousands of times the mass of the sun. Wow. So I'd last at 600,000, but it might be a million. I, I forgot the, the number, but it's large, yeah. okay? And the formation mechanism is still a little bit of a frontier in my field. Mm. You can merge two black holes if two galaxies collide. Right. And we've seen that happen. We, we, it's happening all the time, right. every day, all the time. And so as they collide, the black holes will ultimately find each other. Okay. And then they will merge. And then you have a black hole twice as big. Right. But the black hole's not reaching out. If you would not otherwise fallen into a black hole, right. you're not gonna now start falling into the black hole. Right. We are safe. It's not a drain. We, it's, it's not a toilet bowl drain. Right. right. <laughs> so we're not, we're not gonna one day we're land. We're not cosmic poop. Right, right. Well, gonna, some of us are. <laughs> land in that. So, so no, in fact, in the very distant universe, black holes ultimately will evaporate according to Hawking radiation. It's a, and it's a really interesting phenomenon. So now, it, okay. So Can you tell you what the phenomenon is? Go, please. Okay. Yeah. So a black hole has very strong gravity. Okay. Well, how much gravity does it have? Well, you can think of the gravity having a density of energy. We call it the energy density of gravity. Okay. okay? In its vicinity. Every now and then, spontaneously, that energy becomes particles, according to E equals mc squared. Okay. We'll do that just spontaneously. And you make a particle pair, a matter and antimatter particle pair, and they go in opposite directions. Oh. Okay? Okay. Okay. By the way, they have to go in opposite directions so that the momentum cancels. Because it started out as just a pocket of energy sitting there doing nothing. Right. You can't have two, a particle just go in one direction and nothing canceling out that motion in the other. This Ooh, is like this, a bazooka. Yes, the recoil in the, the recoil other direction. Of Otherwise, the person right. becomes the <laughs> That's the recoil. That's pretty funny. <laughs> that would be fun. <laughs> Note to the next design. Exactly. <laughs> that is awesome. Let me redesign that. Why do you guys have 25 bazooka shooters? <laughs> yeah. Because well, we got 25 shots. <laughs> yeah, so there's a there's a recoil of that to right. send it forward. Gotcha. So the same with the spaceships, the rockets that take off. Do you, do you right. recoil at the back, all the, the exhaust? So so what point was I making? Before? You were talking about, so the particle, as it evaporates. Oh, yeah. You... So, so what happens is, so it, uh, the energy density spontaneously makes a particle pair. One particle falls into the black hole and the other escapes. Right. And that takes mass away from the black hole. And that, and there that is the evaporation, the evaporation of the black hole. Yes. It's, so now, it's very slow, saying, so this, but it's real. But this spontaneous particle, um, it, you know, basically. It's called Hawking radiation. It's Hawking radiation. That's what it's called. So it's the dissemination of the particles that are opposites and one going away, one going in. Yes. And then all of a sudden, if it keeps continuing, then the a, black hole's gone. It evaporates and, to nothing. To nothing. Correct. That, okay. Yeah, yeah. We, <laughs> we got to take a break. We'll be back for our third and final segment. When we come back, you will learn what words pronunciation changes just by capitalizing the first letter. Yes. Oh, yeah. In Neil deGrasse Tyson's Office Hours on Star Talk. This episode of Star Talk is brought to you by Curiosity Stream. We're back on Star Talk. Cosmic Queries edition, Neil deGrasse Tyson's Office Hours where we take questions on anything. It doesn't have to be in a category. <laughs> and they're coming at they're coming from everywhere. Everywhere. Chuck is helping me out here, Chuck. Keep it going. All right, let's jump right. Oh, I have to... No, first you got to give the answer to the tease. Okay, I like words a lot. Okay. So uh, what is this word that you can no, sorry. capitalize the yeah. first letter yeah. and change the meaning of the word? Completely, yeah. Completely. So the word is... I feel like I'm on NPR's word puzzle. <laughs> the word is P O L. I S H. Polish. Yeah. And then you capitalize it and it's Polish. Yeah. So one is what you do to shine something, and the other is, is your nationality. Is the nationality from, from, from right. right. The very nice. Okay. That's a, it's that's a weird it's weird. It is weird. It has nothing to do with the show. No. But I I don't know why I I So don't start a sentence with polish. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because it has to be capitalized. Because it has to be capitalized. <laughs> Polish your shoes. Right. Polish, Polish my shoes. My shoes <laughs> you racist son of a. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Let's go to um, Fyodor Papa. Theodore. Theodore? If it's F Y? Yes, yeah, it Fyodor. is. It's Fyodor. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. last name? Uh, Popov. Fyodor says this If you had to guess, where lies the great filter? Now, first of all, what is the great filter? I, I, I have no idea. 
yet what he's asking in this question. So please proceed. All right. Okay. Let's. There you go. There you go. Let's move. No, no. Uh, let me hear the whole question. That's it. What? If you had to guess, where lies the great filter? I don't know what the great filter is. I mean, unless it's you know, um, the great Brita. Filter. If it's Brita, <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> Where lies the great filter the in great my refrigerator? Filter. <laughs> filter in my water. The great filter. I have no understanding of that question, so we got to go to Wikipedia. All maybe, right. maybe from that again, I'll be able to say something. Say something. Okay. okay. All right. All right. So in, in in that case, what I'll do right here is go to Wiki. Wiki. So you can help me out here and, from and, Wiki, and okay. I'll read it to you. Go. What they say it is. Mm -hmm. The great filter. In the context of the Fermi paradox is whatever prevents dead matter from undergoing abiogenesis, uh, genesis, abiogenesis in time to expanding lasting life as measured by the uh, Kardashev scale. Okay. Right, I can say something about this. All right. I just didn't know it was called the Great, the great filter. filter. Now, all I got from that was... Fermi paradox. Locus. I know what that is. <laughs> yeah, so the Fermi paradox uh, was a question posed by uh, the great physicist Enrico Fermi. Right. So Enrico Fermi posed the question, because mm -hmm. you can run the math. You can say, all right, how long has Earth been here? How long did it take life to form? Mm -hmm. How long did it take what we call intelligence to form? Now that we're intelligent, how long does it take to travel to another planet? Let's say we have a spaceship, mm -hmm. all right? Is it a generational ship? Fine. So it takes 10 generations to get there. Then you become pilgrims. Set up tent. Now, from there, you go to two other planets. Okay. From each of those two planets, they go to, two, to four more. From one to two to four to eight. So it grows exponentially. You can populate the entire galaxy with intelligence in a shorter time than evolutionary time scales. Hmm. Okay, you can do it in like a million years okay. or so. Right. Okay? Yes. And that's, it, right. that's on an evolutionary, uh, the dinosaurs went extinct 65 million years yeah, ago. Exactly. So That's a very short so time. Very on short. On an and it's small scale. compared with the lifetime of a planet. Exactly. So, and especially the future of the universe. Right. So, if that's the case, why hasn't it happened yet? And where are the visitors trying to trying to populate this planet uh, that we're on? So it's the Fermi paradox. Where are they? Maybe they okay. were already here. Maybe we are. And there. maybe we are mm -hmm. them. Okay. You know. So there's some religions that are based on that. That God really? is actually the aliens. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, just That's right on. Okay. All right. Hey, listen, so I don't judge. <laughs> <laughs> just by the fact that you said that, <laughs> me too, judge. <laughs> I don't judge how crazy people are. That's, that's what you said. That was implicit in your... <laughs> so this dead matter, what, they don't mean dead matter because that implies it was once alive. They mean inanimate matter. Okay. Inanimate matter evolving to become self-replicating life. Okay. So the question is, maybe that takes so long that it puts a damper on this whole... On the other process. On, on the, all the other processes. Right. However, that happened really fast on Earth. Okay. We went from inanimate molecules to self-replicating life within a couple of hundred million years. Wow. And once you have life, life was there for billions of years. Right. So that's not really that long. No, it isn't. Right, right. So the filter, I don't see that as the big filter. You know what I think the filter is? What? Whatever urge you have to colonize planets. Okay. And then all your descendants have that same urge. Right. There's going to be a point where... There's a planet I want to colonize. Oh, but you want to colonize that same planet. So then what do we do? You're going to have, you're going to have a blood feud you're with going your a blood own feud family. With your own family. Right. Correct. And so it could be that the urge to want to expand is self-limiting because you will fight wars. You cancel yourself you out. You cancel yourself the out. The very urge that causes you to strike out and discover is the same urge that destroys you in the end. Correct. Wow. Right. And there's a, there are whole categories of these kinds of problems in life. For example, I don't know if it still happens if you lose a quarter in the, between the base and the back of the seat in your car, right? And you reach for it, right? The act of reaching for it separates the two cushions more, and then it falls further in. See, I'm cheap. That whole seat's coming out. <laughs> 
out. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. You get in that corner. I have actually pulled a seat out <laughs> to get to money that's far. <laughs> we got one minute left. Let's do lightning round. Go. All right, here we go. You know what? This is an education question, so let's do it. Do it. Uh, this is uh, Lightning S- round. Stephen Donham. He says, hey, Neil, love your show. Listen all the time. My question is about Common Core math being taught in school. It seems like a waste of time, and kids have to go through all of these extra steps to get the right answer when there were simpler ways to get the right answer when it comes to life and death and space. Wouldn't it not be better to get the right answer the fastest possible way? Oh, good question. Very okay, good question. I am not... Doing a lightning round on that question. Okay. It's too important. It is a very I'm important. I'm going to end with my answer to that question. Okay. So okay? Let's, this is the end of the show. and that's why I, I I I'm doing it. deep dive on Good. educational philosophies. Well, that's why I picked the in, question. In my recent months and well, years. Well, you're an education. Uh, you're an educator. I, a so. deep dive. And I'm looking at what people have said, what have worked, what hasn't, best practice. And I have come to conclude with regard to that question. Okay. What matters more than the right answer? Mm-hmm. is the right question. Interesting. And taking a cue from Isaac Asimov uh-huh. in an essay he once wrote called The Relativity of Wrong. The Relativity of Wrong. Yes. Okay, you know, so here you go. You're in elementary school. Uh-huh. And I have a spelling bee. hmm And I ask you to spell cat. And you spell it K-A-T. Mm-hmm. It's marked wrong. Right. You don't get any credit for that. Because the correct answer is C-A-T. Right. But suppose instead you had spelled it X-Q-W. It's still marked wrong. And that's so much farther away than it's K-A-T. It's so much farther away You're than right. K-A-T. In fact, you could argue that K-A-T is a better spelling than C-A-T. You know why? Because if you look up cat in the dictionary, C-A-T... The phonetic spelling is K-A-T. That's correct. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. That's so, awesome. So, but you got it marked wrong. Right. So this urge to get the right answer. Mm-hmm. Yes, I don't want to diminish the importance of right answers. That has value. But it has less value than you think it does. Mm-hmm. Because in exploration, you have no answers. You're on the precipice at the boundary between what is known and what is unknown, and you're taking a step into that unknown. And you don't know what's there. You don't even know what question to ask. I know what's there. A but cat. but you're, pro- <laughs> you're probing. You're poking. You're trying to figure out what question to ask. And so, and most questions don't even have, have an answer. unambiguous answers. Right, exactly. Uh, can I give you an example? Go ahead. Okay. What's the diameter of the sun? Ask me that. What is the diameter of the sun? You look it up, it'll say 864,000 miles. Okay. Okay, fine. But in what wavelength of light did you make that measurement? Okay. Other wavelengths of light emerge from deeper in the star. Right. Okay? And if you're using x-rays, it's bigger. The corona emits x-rays. We found that out earlier in the show because of the different wavelengths. It's a different wavelength. So you have to specify. How high up does the atmosphere go? Earth's atmosphere. Because well, 62 miles, 100 kilometers. That's We've just agreed because that's a round number in kilometers. There's still air molecules above 62 miles. That's why we have to boost the Hubble telescope every now and then because air molecules are, are, are knocking it out of orbit. Okay? So there is no demarcation line. It fades until it blends with the, inter, with the interplanetary medium. So we like tidy answers. But most of science is not even about the answer. It's about the general understanding of what's going on, Hmm. and then you take it from there. So no, Common Core math is a good thing. It's got you thinking in ways that it will enable you to tackle a problem in the future that you have never seen before. And if you're in space, it's not about knowing the right answer to a pre-designated question. It's about figuring out an answer to a question no one has asked before. Right. Right. And so you need the tools and the methods and the power of inquiry to accomplish that. Wow. There you go. Drop the mic. That was That's a very good answer. I'm saying. I like it. I'm writing this up. It makes sense. It's going in the next thing. All right. Chuck. That was This was good, man. Always good to have you. Yeah. Dude. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> 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 this has been Star Talk. I'm Neil deGrasse Tyson, your personal astrophysics. We're recording this in the my office. At the, the Cosmic Hay- Crib. Uh, at the Cosmic Crib at, at the Hayden Planetarium in New York City. 
part of the American Museum of Natural History. And as always, I bid you to keep looking up. Thanks to Curiosity Stream for supporting this episode of Star Talk. The universe is full of mysteries, as you've seen in this episode. Well, Curiosity Stream has a video about the universe in their Curious World series. See that? It's a it's called a Curious World, and it comes in a series. The animations are so engaging, I could have watched the video with the sound off, but don't do that. You want to learn something. They show you everything from star formation to theories about dark matter, and most importantly, how planets like Earth formed, which is important because, you know, I live here on Earth. You can watch it for just $2.99 per month. And if you go to curiositystream.com slash startalk and use code startalk, your first 31 days are free. Go there right now with over 2,400 documentary features and series to enjoy. You cannot beat Curiosity Stream.